Transitioning from the standard American diet to the ketogenic diet can be very challenging, and there are many ways to fail. So how can we start the ketogenic diet and avoid being terrible at it? The starting point is to understand what this diet is about. If you're looking at any diet in the last 50 years, you may think this is a little counterintuitive. The ketogenic diet reverses inflammation from inside the cells. That healing comes from eating high fat in the absence of carbs. Think of it as no sugar, no starch, high fat. I want you to remember the number 20. We'll come back to that in a few minutes, but in the meantime, I want you to think about and do a few things before ever starting the ketogenic diet. Go to your pharmacy and buy urine ketone strips. The ketogenic diet means you have ketones in circulation, and unlike excess sugar, when ketones are abundant in your circulation, you pee them out. This provides an easy, cheap way to measure them. Pee on a ketone strip and see if you're making ketones. When my patients start on the ketogenic diet and they feel like it's not working for them, my first question is to ask them, are you sure you're making ketones? No ketones in the urine instantly tells them that they've been eating too many carbohydrates for the way their body is working right now. That number will change over time, but you won't know what it is without looking for it. And that's the best part of the ketogenic diet. It is measurable. And with urine ketone strips, it's instant feedback. You're not on the ketogenic diet if you're not making ketones. One tip, buy a small quantity and be sure the cap is on tight. Those ketone strips go bad when they're left open to air. So I tell my patients when they start the ketogenic diet to put two or three of them in their pocket and use them in that day, measuring instantly are you in ketosis or not. Next, look up the words medium chain triglycerides or MCT specifically C8 or C10. This is a special kind of fat that gets absorbed, not digested. Zip right through the intestinal lining and into your liver. And your liver then unzips this nutrient into burnable fuel called a ketone. If your liver is not used to making ketone, this supplement makes it very easy for your liver to get back into the practice of doing so. I'll explain more in another video, but it's a really good thing to have on hand if you need it. Next, empty your cupboards. This diet has a lot to do with your relationship with food. Old habits will bounce you off the keto wagon easy as pie. There are carbohydrates everywhere. They're at your work, on your way to work, on the way home from work, at your break from work. Your friends eat carbs, your neighbors eat carbs, your church eats carbs, they're everywhere. Get temptation out of your home. Your cupboards need to be a safe place, a place you control. Get rid of the white rice and pasta and flour and pastry and all those baking goods that you've had around. Look in the pantry and if the ingredients have more than seven items in it, put it in the donation box. Okay, now that you've got the number 20 in your mind and ketone strips and MCT and empty cupboards, I need you to pause. Starting the ketogenic diet means introducing big changes in your behavior. And during the transition from the standard American diet to the ketogenic diet, many patients go overboard eating way too much food, and most of which they shouldn't be eating at all on the keto diet. So once those cupboards are empty, don't fill them. Give those shelves a moment to breathe. Take a picture, show the world that you actually pushed pause. Do not run out and spend $100 on groceries. I have a grocery list in the show notes below, but pause and listen to the rest of this message. Embrace the absence of food in your home. You're not going to die without the access to all that stuff for a day or two. We will fill them with simple foods that should be on the ketogenic diet, but respect the pause in this process. Remember that number 20? Yeah. It represents the best place to start for how many carbohydrates you should consume in a day on the ketogenic diet. I start patients out with 20 total carbohydrates and then have them report to me when they start peeing ketones. It's in that pause after they've cleared out the cupboards that I'm waiting to see how long it takes them to transition into a state of ketosis. I encourage folks to eat out. Use buffalo wings dipped in ranch or blue cheese, or I encourage them to go have a burrito bowl, hold the rice, hold the bean, 
extra queso, extra meat, and some grilled vegetables. These are the kind of meals that are low in carbohydrates and high in fat and flavor. That fatty, satiating meal is a brilliant way to start the ketogenic diet, and there's no leftovers in the fridge for them to cheat later on. Meals like this keep those carbs under 20 and have patients peeing ketones in no time. The next big headline for the ketogenic diet is eat enough fat to feel full. After a long time on low calories and low fat, people don't really know what it feels like anymore to feel full. Satiety, or the reason you feel full, is linked to a hormonal surge in your body. It's your body telling you that you're satiated, you're full, and it is linked to the consumption of fat. But if you've been on low calorie, low fat, those hormones haven't been active in a while. So to show them what satiety feels like, I tell my patients to eat butter. Yes, eat a stick of butter. If you fasted all night long because you were sleeping and you wake up in the morning, have a cup of coffee with a stick of butter and eat the butter until you feel full. Once you recognize that feeling of satiety in your mind, you will find it again and again. But many people have not connected satiety with that sensation. And we need you to know that to succeed on the ketogenic diet. With that coffee and butter breakfast, you have a high fat meal with low carbohydrates. This keeps the blood sugar stable and prevents the insulin from spiking. This is when ketones sweep into their system and they feel great. Ketosis will win them over once they get there and stay there. Eating butter is not in the cards forever, but it is a brilliant place to start to teach them what that sensation feels like. You must recognize what it feels like to feel full because the next rule is only eat when you're hungry. For years, we've been taught that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And then in our abundance, we eat five or six more times throughout the day with meals and snacks. A lot of people, based on the message of this rule, eat breakfast even when they're not hungry. And then they eat the next few meals based on their clock, not because they have a sensation of hunger. If you're doing the ketogenic diet because you want to lose weight, this is a very important message to figure out. It's worth eating the stick of butter to learn this. And remember that MCT oil I mentioned earlier? They are so valuable on this ketogenic diet. I teach you why in this next video. I'll see you there.